just let him feel you as we prepare for this word. Just take in everything that the Holy Spirit has for you. Thank you, Lord, that you are here. Yes, I just release legions of angels to encompass and inhabit this space. I nullify every assignment, every curse, every incantation, every unclean word that is being spoken right now over this. I nullify it in Jesus' name. Yes, there are angels surrounding this word. I thank you, angels, that you are being released and commanded to open up truth. Yes, Lord. That the spirit man is being prepared of everyone to receive truth in Jesus' name. Yes. There is a firewall of protection around this word. I command that the enemy's camp is into confusion. Just as you did with Babylon, they are speaking against themselves. They are speaking in tongues. They are all in confusion all over the place right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Holy One, that hearts and minds are open in Jesus' name. I thank you that the Spirit man is being prepared to receive this word. Thank you. Yes, Lord, burn it out, burn it out, burn it out, burn it out. Hallelujah. Breathe in the breath of life. Thank you, Ra. We're breathing you in. Your name is life. Thank you, Lord, for joy.
<laughs> oh Lord, you are here. <laughs> Yes, Lord, more, more. <laughs> now, my friends, the joy of the Lord. I am shaking it, it's the Lord. So the Lord declares more, more is coming, more is coming, says the Lord, more is coming. Joy in the place of tears, breaking through addictions. Building up of new things in this hour. The Lord says through his prophet today, but is there anything that is too hard? Any stronghold that is too hard for the Lord to break? The Lord says, I make my vessel laugh because I laugh. I do laugh. My vessel is a reflection of me, says the Lion of Judah. And I laugh because my word has commanded you as co-heirs in Christ to trample on the enemy. Did I not command in my word, says the Father, that you would be given authority to trample on, on serpents and scorpions. So I too, as my vessel laughs, it is a reflection of my face because I do laugh in the face of the enemy because there is nothing Catch that nothing, nothing that is too hard for the Father, the Lion of Judah, Yahweh, Yeshua, Ru Hagadash, <laughs> to break in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo, I feel the fire already. New levels. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The sword is going to be fire. Um, Sometimes when I'm, a lot of times when I'm walking in my walk with the Lord, I would just burst out into laughter, but not a whole time, not all the time on screen when I'm filming. So this is, he is here. Thank you, Holy One. Thank you that you are inhabiting this space. I actually didn't know what virtual, uh, virtual background to put, but the Lord said to use the outer space one because excuse me, <laughs> it is indicative, sorry, uh, is indicative of the supernatural realm. And the Lord says, I take you from glory to glory. In my house, there are many mansions. In my house, there are many realms. You are accessing the supernatural. You live constantly in the supernatural, my daughter. So why is it? Why would it be anything other than fitting? Thank you, Jesus, that your background would be of the supernatural to spread the supernatural and my glory to my remnant. Amen. <laughs> well, that's a little bit of background as to why I have outer space and like my clothes will come in and out. I'm learning. <laughs> I gotta find a great spot. Oh, modern day technology is so funny. So welcome to Affirm Family Ministries. I am Prophet Natalie J. Gare. I am the founder and CEO of Affirm Family Ministries. If you're catching this for the first time, then welcome viewers. If you are um, tuning in again, I'm so happy to have you here on behalf of our ministry. We welcome you. We pray for you. We are 
Uh, my team is just constantly in prayer for the Lord to be working mightily and powerfully, powerfully in this hour for such a time as this through his spirit. Um, Affirm Family Ministries is a five-fold ministry, apostolic ministry. We operate in the prophetic and we are passionate about having the prophetic reach God's children. Every tongue, every tribe, every nation, the Lord said, I will not come until my word is spread through every time trunk tribe, tongue, and nation. Amen. So we are passionate about infusing the supernatural and the Holy Spirit, the flow of the Holy Spirit, and making that accessible for others who have not been privy to that. The Lord says, I came that none should perish. Amen. I came that none should perish. So we are passionate about bringing that to you. We are passionate about picking up our crosses and doing what it takes at any cost. And believe me, to pick up your, pick up your cross, there's a price to be paid. Amen. But my team and I are, we've picked up our crosses. We've laid down our lives. We've died to ourselves so that we can be used by the Holy One. We have literally gone, we all have testimonies on our team. So we all have gone through so much just to be able to be God's vessels. Amen. But we are happy to do that for you. And I just need to take a breather. Yes, Lord, I want to, I want to preach your word, Lord, at a frequency and vibration of 444. Yes. Tune me to 444. Four, four. Yes, Lord, because I'm really giddy right now on the Holy Spirit and I'm laughing, but this is such a heavy word that touches on a very sensitive topic and subject. Um, my spirit man is up here, um, which is really on elation. The word I'm getting is elation because, uh, and I'm just elated to be here because <laughs> the music and the worship. So I was vibing um, to a frequency higher than 444, but 444 is the um, frequency that David um, was tuning in at. Remember, David was a psalmist and he played an instrument. So he frequently tuned to, to um the frequency and vibration of 444, which is a little bit softer. A little bit softer. So since I was experiencing the joy and elation of the music and being in that realm, I need to bring it down to the frequency and vibration to tune to 444, to that of David the Psalmist, because this is a heavy word that's going to be disseminated. And amen, there will be joy over the breakthrough, but to disseminate it, I need to be tuned at a frequency that is lower than what I was at when I started. More, my Lord. I'm ready, says the Lord. Supernatural is really all tired of all these new age people coming out and telling you that it's accessible through new age. No, okay, that's the counterfeit. God still has prophets and apostolic ministries here today. The supernatural is accessible to you through Christ Jesus. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. Okay, don't follow the counterfeits. I'm very passionate about tuning people away from that and getting on par because people are hungry people are thirsty people need to be fed god's word in this hour um they're hungry for more and that is not operating in a lot of our closed walls churches today so god is <laughs> sent in his remnant to speak to those he needs to call out amen so i'm very passionate about that um but moving along, we're gathered today because uh, the Lord has given me a word and a corporate fast and the word, thank you, Holy One, that goes along with it in regards to um, Red Ribbon Week. Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Week. Sorry, I'm so uh, elated that I'm stumbling my words, which often happens 
um, when I preach, like I'll just stumble over each other. It's like I have that Moses thing going on. Where it's all of a sudden I'm a person who's really like put together and intact. All of a sudden I give a word. I'm just so excited. So, um, it's a heavy word. Red Ribbon Week is a week that is celebrated um, to promote abstinence from controlled substances. And it goes through the uh, school system where kids will pledge to remain free from, from utilizing or using controlled substances. And so um, next week, which starts today, well, well, actually this week, I'm filming early, so it'll be the Monday, is the start of Red Ribbon Week. So that is why this video is being disseminated. And that is why, thank you, Holy One, we are doing a call to action. Catch that. A call to action regarding breakthrough of substance abuse across all, all of our nations. Amen. A breakthrough to break through corporately substance abuse that is happening at such a high rate and that is the tool of the enemy to break down number one to break down the family unit to break down the individual at the most um primary level to um inhibit them from achieving their goals and inhibit them and limit them from being able to access god's supernatural amen but opens the gateway rather for them to access the demonic supernatural and then have that be a portal to access their mind and thus lead to the deterioration of their mind. And how many know, in order for us to operate, catch that in excellency, we need to be performing at a mind and our mind needs to be renewed, not according to the world's ways. And it can't be devoured by the enemy, but we have to have a mind, amen, renewed according to Jesus Christ according to the scripture in Romans, that our mind needs to be renewed according to Jesus Christ, because catch that we are a new creation. So the tool of the enemy is to break down that family unit, to break down the individual at the most um, primary level, to inhibit them from reaching their calling and their purpose and their destiny. Catch that to inhibit that person at the most primary level from being able to reach their purpose, calling, and destiny. Because how many of you know when you're bound, you cannot function correctly? Catch that. When you are bound, you can't function correctly. When you are bound, you cannot function correctly. That is a word for somebody. When you are bound, you cannot function correctly. And the Lord dropped in my spirit that totter. Your ministry has to host a corporate fast to break the bondage and addiction for this stronghold across our nation and across all nations in the globe because this is an epidemic. This is the true epidemic. This is the true epidemic, says the Father. But if we can we get it twisted a little bit, we can take our eyes off of what I want my remnant to focus on that needs to be broken. If they can create a diversion, the enemy can keep my prayer warriors bound for what really needs to be prayed for. The Lord says it is the time and the hour to be interceding for this. So it came about because I was working, I, I, I work half from home and then I work half, um, I go in to actually do my job. So I was working from home and I stepped out of a Zoom meeting, I believe it was, and I was catching the news. And um, gosh, this is so frustrating. Jesus, it's like I can't. Yes, Jesus, stay still. Sorry, this virtual background is annoying me. Um, not the supernatural Jesus, just how I'm coming in and out. So I left a Zoom meeting and I went out to get like a cup of coffee or something. And I was watching them. Um, the Channel 5 News was on and it had reported um, another fentanyl overdose in California at a local high school. This male was um, a football player at a local high school in the Valley area of Southern California. And um, while the, the incident didn't transpire at school, he OD'd on fentanyl. And... Um, I have a heart for minors and I just, it was more, so I wasn't surprised when I was grieved, 
But the type of grief that I experienced watching the story about this particular minor who was only, I think, like 16, it was expounded upon so greatly that I knew that there had to be something done about it. And it was right then the Lord said, you feel that way, daughter, because you feel my heart. You feel my heart. And indeed, I'm going to have you hold a corporate fast. Because my word needs to be disseminated and my body needs to be working to attack this cause. Catch that. My body needs to be working to attack this cause, not just sitting by and grieving. We don't stay with the spirit of grief, but we get up and we are doers of the word. Catch that. We get up and we are doers of the word. My word says that I came to heal. So healing thus needs to take place. So the Lord gave me a word and I was doing my background and I just, I I've never used controlled substances myself. Glory to God. I know many people in my family have. Um, every family has them. Um, there's a lot in my family that have used controlled substances. Some are even homeless because they've dabbled in controlled substance use. I have family members who even sold controlled substances. Um, I, I don't think any family is exempt, no, no matter how much you love Jesus and no matter what socioeconomic status you come from. No part of the globe are you exempt from it or no matter how smart you are how much money you make or how much you love with Jesus you are um I often find that the harder a family loves Jesus the more those kids are attacked to not be walking that narrow path so no family is exempt I'm not here speaking from an um, empathetic viewpoint they're in my family and um I've often just been drawn to homeless people. And um, ever since before I started in ministry work, I've always been drawn to the homeless. I've always been drawn to the mentally ill. Um, it doesn't uh, frighten me when I hear or see people walking and they're talking to themselves. I know that creeps other people out. I'm not going to say that there's certain things that I'm just like, okay, that's, ooh, that it, it doesn't like give me a little chill. But on the average, I'm not one that, like it freaks me out. Um, I've always kind of been drawn to that. Um, God has always placed me in the midst. Thank you, Holy One, of that. He's always sent his vessel me in right in the midst of that. Um, I've been in, I've done interviews with um, pedophilers, pedophilers and pedophiles and drug addicts and abusers in the federal correctional facilities, the state levels, the local level facilities. I've gone into mental wards to interview people who've been medicated at a 5150 hold, whether they be minors or parents. Um, I've seen the worst of the worst. So it doesn't, it doesn't phase me. And then um, I've gone into homeless encampments to serve. I, I'm not turned off by it. It doesn't scare me to see a needle. But catch it, it doesn't scare me, but it grieves me. This is a difference. It doesn't scare me, but it grieves me. Because it's out there. And um, I'm often drawn to homeless people. Like it doesn't, it just, it doesn't faze me. Like I will walk up to them and be like, well, what do you need? One of the things our ministry does at the local level is just buy mass gift cards to in and out And I just keep them in my car. And when I see them, I'm just like, here you go, <laughs> here you go. And I have prayer scripture cards that I attach to the gift card. And I'll just like, when I see somebody like off the freeway or whatever, I'll be like, like praise, praise Jesus. I don't get honked out. I'll be like, here you go. Um, it's just something that we do. It's something that's led by the Holy One that, that we do. Um, I don't mind walking up to them. I don't think we should live in fear of them. One beautiful thing that the Lord has incline my spirit to be able to see is whenever I see a person who is clearly 5150 or um it's you just know it's mental illness induced by substance abuse um I cry on the inside but I love them because the Lord has inclined my spirit on many of them to look at them like babies because when we think of babies in their first birth and they're in the NICU or um, they're with their moms they're the purest form of pure 
And the Lord highlights to me, that person that you see on the street like that, they are once a baby just like you. And that makes me cry because I'm like, what happened? What happened? That could have been the baby next to my mom's room. And here I am and here they are. The Lord always shows me to them. I get tangible images of them and the prophetic of them as a baby. And Lord says, I want you to see them as I see them, my daughter, in the purest form. So often when I see a homeless person, I don't see them as the adult. I look at them and think, I see a baby. I see a tangible baby. Be like, wow. That is precious. That was formed by God too. They were uniquely and individually created in the womb like I was. They too were once a baby, pure without blemish. And then my heart is more inclined to want to serve them because I'm like, wow, look at how the enemy has come, either through a generational curse in your lineage of substance abuse or mental illness, through portals that have been accessed through music, music television, video games, controlled substances, or through trauma, molestation, victimization, um, abuse emotionally and or physically. Look at how the world has devoured the purity of that baby. But I praise God because Jesus can take a person, anyone, homeless, mentally ill, and deliver them and bring them from glory to glory. And we must not discount the fact that the word says that oftentimes too, when we come into contact with the homeless person, it might just be an angel in disguise. And I can tell you that this happens to me frequently. This is not like a yearly, a yearly thing. <laughs> this for me is frequently, at least once a month, I'll see a person and the Holy Spirit will drop in my spirit. Not homeless, angel. You're being tested. Sometimes he tells me I'm being tested. Sometimes I don't get the word that I'm being tested but I know I'm being tested. You just know, your spirit man just knows. Will you be my vessel and serve them? Yes, my Lord. <laughs> One time I went into home goods, this is back with last, like two weeks ago. And I saw a homeless person totally reeked of urine. Like nobody was paying attention, but I did. And the Lord went in there and said, I want you to feed them. And I was like, well, I got to do my shopping now. Like, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said, I'll tell you when you check out. So when I checked out, I was like, well, what can I feed him? I'm at home goods. There's no food here. Um, there's the store. There's like a McDonald's across the way. But tell me how you want me to do this. And the Lord was like, I'll tell you when you check out. So when I checked out, the Lord said, it doesn't have to be elaborate. See that? See that um, bag of caramels in the checkout line? And I said, yes, my Lord. And the Lord said, purchase that for them. So I said, okay. So I went and purchased a bag of caramels for them. My mom was with me. We were buying all candles. We love home goods. I'm a home good, home goods person. I love my home. So we were buying candles and stuff. Um, and I was getting ready to check out. I was like, why do you like caramels? You don't even eat caramels. So I was like, I'll tell you why. So we walk out and then I was like, they're for the homeless person, right? Here. And I was like, well, they were here. <laughs> and my mom goes, well, I know which one you were talking about, the one that que huele, which is in Spanish like smell. And I said, yeah, mom, but yeah, the Lord told me to be obedient and go get it. And they weren't here. And then when I got in the Christ, the Lord, my Lord, where'd they go? I bought the caramel. I want to give them some sugar. Like, you know, and the Lord said, just testing you. Just testing the posture of your heart. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Give them away. Give them to your mom. Do whatever. Just testing the posture of your heart. Gotta periodically test my vessel's daughter. I I get it. So you just never know. But that's a side note about just how like please don't go through and like give those looks to them. Like I get it. So all of these stinky boos. I get it. Look at them. Ask the father to open your heart. That's the word I'm getting. Ask the father to open your heart so that you would too would be able to see them with the heart of Jesus. You too would be able to see them as Jesus does as babies. Because remember, they too were once, they were once in a baby ward, be, pure. And think about what had to happen. Life happens. We all experience life. Some just don't recover as well. Catch this. Some just don't recover as well because they're predispositioned in their generational line, line or lineage. There's curses. Some just go through hell and back. 
You just never know. You never know. That's a word for somebody. Because I'm getting visions of people sticking up their nose at people and then going to the four wall churches and calling themselves Christians. Jesus said this is a word for someone. You're two steps away from there yourself. Oop. All right. Anyways, um, getting into statistics, over 96,700 people die from drug overdoses a year. 96,700 die from drug overdoses a year. 72% are opioids. That factor into seven out of 10 overdose. So 70%, seven out of 10, count it, seven out of 10 ODs are actually due to opioid use. So heroin, um, fentanyl, um, Dilaudid, which is a pain medication that is given in the hospital. It's an, opio an opioid. One million drug overdoses have killed almost a million people since 1999. Preliminary reports indicate the number of drug overdose deaths have increased 29.6%, so almost 30% since 2020. So there's been an almost 30% increase since 2020. Whom? Let me think, Winky Dink. What occurred in 2020? COVID-19. The pandemic. Or as the Lord calls it, the diversion tactic. 30%. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. I just saw something on IG that this is now this is now news. They they captured um, a bunch of narcotics at the uh, airport that were being smuggled in as sweet tarts in sweet tarts boxes, in Whoppers boxes. Think about it. Why is the Lord having this ministry fast during Red Ribbon Week? Hum, let me think. Halloween is right around the corner. Pick up your cross, says the Lord. That's from the Lion's War, because I usually don't get mad like that. Jesus. Wake up. Wake up. It's not just about yourselves. I have not called you to be Lord of your life. I have called you, says the Father, to allow me to be Lord over your life so that you may bless others as I have been a blessing to you. Not to look down upon them, not to turn your eye, not to look and be like, mm -mm -mm, those people. The Lord says, you are two steps away yourself. The interesting thing is 6,198 people have died of deaths. Um, and the state that has the highest number of OD deaths, my state, Cali, the great state of California. And it's so evident. I, I don't think there's a city you can go to where you don't find a homeless person that you know is afflicted. Um, mental, their mental schema has been affected through substance abuse. It don't matter what city you could go to. You go to the bougie city and you find them. No one's exempted Cali. You just go downtown LA, they run the streets there. There's being needles passed around everywhere, people talking to themselves. Everywhere, the riverbeds, the Angel Stadium had a whole encampment. I know, I went in there. I did land where planted the cross to, expel, to, to get them out of there, but not to, to just place them, but for the Lord to supernaturally work because that's not doing anything for them being housed behind the baseball team. Second largest city of, of substance abuse and death, Florida. So the Lord highlighted this to me. California, port state along the Pacific. Uh, Florida, port state along the um, Atlantic. Port states. The highest number of substance abuse and deaths due to substance abuse is happening in port states. Why? Because there's territor territorial dominion by a port unclean spirit, an unclean marine spirit that has territorial dominion that has not been broken down. Has not been broken down. The Lord wanted me to highlight it. Do we have the spiritual authority as co-heirs in Christ? Yes, we do. Are people picking up their crosses to do that in the mass number that the Lord has called us to do? No. 
So people are not operating in the glory. So the unclean marine spirits at these ports are wreaking havoc and taking dominion over your family members. Let it, lest it be your children in a few years. No one's exempt. Because the Lord says, I have a small army, but I would, it, it is my will, it is my desire to have a larger army to take down these territorial spirits. There are generals, says the Lord, there's sergeants, there's colonels in my army. And it seems like these days it's only the sergeants, the generals, and the army operating in my supernatural military. And the Lord says, where's my infantry? People want to be, well, if I don't have a position of authority, I'm not operating because I don't want to be an infantry. Pick up your cross, says the Lord. Pick up your cross. He's tired of it. That's from Jesus. That's not for me. So the Lord says, we must fast. We must fast because this is this is happening and it's taking down families. It's taking down entire generations. It's taking down our children. I, you can't go on the news. You cannot go on the news without hearing about another OD. I'm reading on IG that, that um, narcotics have been captured. And we also fasting for the global trafficking that is happening. Catch that for the global trafficking that is happening, because this stuff is not just happening at, at a time like this, just randomly. If you think that this stuff is just on the rise randomly, then I pray that your eyes and your supernatural ears are opened up to the demonic agenda, because these things are being trafficked in by cartels for population decline. And then there's a diversion over here to take away from what's really going on over here. But we are not just fasting for individuals to be broken. We're also fasting for the territorial, um, the territorial demonic entity that is operating to come down. We are also um, fasting for the nat people operating in the natural through that spirit, cartels, trafficking, people's bodies being cut up and drugs smuggled in them to be taken down as well. Because we got a whole diversion over here and the body of Christ operating against each other instead of standing in one accord. And what does the scripture say? A house divided against itself cannot stand. So that the enemy can create a diversion over here and get God's people to be in division amongst themselves and they cannot focus on the true thing that needs to be taken down. Who wins? The enemy wins. Jesus is tired of it. Jesus said, I didn't die for this. I did not die for this. I came to, I died so that people would not perish and people are perishing. How do you think that makes the heart of Jesus feel? <sighs> Jesus said many of them wouldn't even know because their hearts are not in sync or in tune with me, daughter, that they wouldn't even know what you mean when I say, how do you think that makes the heart of Jesus feel? Because they don't operate with the heart of Jesus. They're too busy worried about their when they're getting their next check and how they're going to spend it. They're too busy worried about their next check and how they're going to spend it. Instead of sowing unto the kingdom and to the people like my word says, they're sowing into themselves. They're sowing into their own kingdom instead of my kingdom. Wow. Mic drop. But the Lord said during this fast, he wants us to focus on Psalm 103, 12, 16, because that scripture is the embodiment of how he breaks through. Catch up. The scripture, Psalm 103, 12, 16, is the embodiment of how Jesus, how God breaks through things. Let's go ahead and read. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Catch that. As far as the east is from the west. And we see that this... Um, that the most number of, of ODs are happening from the where? From the east to the west. Cali to Florida. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. That's why the Lord shows me these people as babies because the Lord knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As for man, his days are like grass. 
he flourishes like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it. And it is gone. The wind blows over it. And it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. And its place remembers it. So the Lord says he can break these bondages and addictions because he knew you when you were just dust. You know that before we come to earth, we reside. This is going to blow some people's mind because this isn't out of your realm. This is, you're not thinking at this level. But I desire and so does Jesus desire for you to upgrade your thinking to this level because the supernatural is real and it's accessible to you. Before we are dropped into our mother's wombs. We live as stones of fire in the Father's heart. We live as stones of fire in the Father's heart. There's a scroll in over our life for when we come to earth. We live in the Father's heart. That's why scripture says we are one with the Father. I knew you before you were formed. He sure did. He sure did. Because you lived as a stone of fire with Mama. Catch that. Because you lived. As a stone of fire, as a gem inside the Father's heart. That's how he knew you before you were formed. That's a revelation for somebody. But the Lord says, so as far as the east from the west, so far as he's removed our transgressions from us. So no matter how far you are from God, no matter how far the addiction has gotten in your loved one's life, in your child's life, or no matter how many generations it's past, the Lord, Lord is showing me a DNA structure, which we call in science, the double helix. The double helix is a DNA that goes like that. So when you, you are one with Christ, you have the plumb light of Christ. Your DNA is one with Christ. You are intertwined. But the Lord is showing me some generational lineages that are like, they're out of control. They're out of control. The enemy has run rampant. But the Lord says, as far as the East is from the West, so far... Has he removed those transgressions from us? So we are fasting, catch that, to remove these transgressions from our generational lineage, to remove them, pluck them out as far as the east, as far as the east is from the west, pluck those transgressions out, burn them out with the all-consuming fire of Jesus, of Yeshua. Burn them out of our DNA structure. So they are no more. See if you can attack it at the root, it's gone. Catch that. That's a word for somebody. That's a, revel a revelation. If you can attack it at its root, the most primary level, which is our DNA. Yes, if you want to get technical, deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, if you want to attack it at the most intricate primary level, the DNA, the double helix, as far as the east is from the west, he wants to remove that from your generational lineage. So it is no more. Because he's rising you up to be the David in your family. Ain't nobody going to fast but you. Don't wait for somebody else. You pick up your cross and say, I am going to fast to break this because so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. Instead of being in the Bible like so-and-so begot so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so begot so-and-so, it's more like so-and-so was on drugs and then so-and-so's daughter was on drugs and then so-and-so's daughter's daughter was on drugs. And then so-and-so, so-and-so son was on, was addicted to, was, had a problem with alcoholism. You know what I'm talking about. I know what he's talking about because this is in my family too. But praise God, I got to be the David in my family. And the Lord is telling me to share my story. I got to be the David in my family. I got cousins, no shade, love them. I got cousins who sold drugs. He's in club fed. My granddad beat my grandmother. He was an alcoholic. Alcoholism runs in my generational line. My paternal grandfather battled with alcoholism. Praise Jesus, he was delivered from alcoholism in his 50s, but his life was cut short after that. My paternal grandfather, I really never knew. Died when I was two. Praise God for a praying mom and a praying dad so that when I would come about, I wouldn't have to deal with those issues of alcoholism in my life. 
my dad never dealt with alcoholism. My mom never dealt with alcoholism. But my mom was a praying mom since she got saved in the 70s and said, no, will this afflict my household? So my brothers didn't have to deal with it. I never had to deal with it. I don't like, I don't, I can't stand the smell of beer. I don't like it. I have an aversion to it. I can drink in moderation. And as a prophet, the Lord has given me the exact amount that I can have in communion and at social gatherings, which is few and far between. And I know the exact limit and I have no desire for it. In fact, I probably shouldn't do this, but I actually make jokes from time to time, time to time about being drunk in the spirit or just about Jack Daniels. But it just, because it doesn't, it's probably not the wisest thing to do, but because I've never battled with it, I, it's, it's not, it doesn't afflict me or anything like that, but praise God for a praying mom and a praying dad that they had to break that. But I know it was in the generational line. The Lord says it was broken for your brothers and you. So you, but you, you, it was broken for you at that level, but now you're going to go deeper daughter and you're going to break it and cut it at its root in the DNA form so that it doesn't afflict my kids. I have family members who are homeless. Use controlled substances. I've had family members who've lost children. The foster care system because of controlled substances. It's in every family. No one is exempt. I'm not standing up here on some platform preaching to you guys from not having experience gone through my family. I may never have personal experience, but I've walked in the hallways of prisons and mental wards for my occupation and for ministry. And I walked through the stories and been in intercession for my own extended family. No one is exempt. It doesn't matter how high you are. We got educated people. We got non-educated people. We got nurses, public servants, attorneys, teachers, professors. Don't matter how educated you are. It afflicts every family at every level. But God wants you to be the David in your family. Will you pick up your cross, says the Lord? So we are going to be fasting um, for three days during Red Ribbon Week. This Wednesday, this Thursday, and this Friday. And you might ask, Prophet, why three days? Why three days? Because the Lord gave me this. We are fasting for three days. And he wants you to repeat Psalm 103, 12 through 16 out of your mouth. Orally, orally cite Psalm 103, 12 through 16. Three times a day for three days. Because if you recite Psalm 103, 12 through 16 is where he removes the transgressions and we're, we're praying and fasting for them to be removed from our loved ones individually. We're also praying for them to be removed at the most primary level, which is that DNA strand attacking it at, at its root. And we're also praying corporately for the things to be removed from our states from the trafficking that is going on and from all these things to come to light and also be re, um, be repaid justice for justice for the lives that were lost and for all of this um, debauchery that is going on because that is against God's word and he doesn't like it. And he said that he came to know a parish and children are perishing. God, that is innocent blood being shed because of drugs being trafficked. God does not like it. Will you pick up your cross and fast? So, he wants you to repeat Psalm 103, 12 through 16, three times a day, um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Why three times a day? And why are we fasting for three days? Because uh, mathematically, three times three is nine. Catch that. Three times three is nine. So prophetically, the number three by itself means completion. It is done. Jesus rose from the grave on the third day. It is done. So prophetically three is it is done. But when you multiply it, when you multiply it, catch that expansion. When you multiply it, when you go bigger, when you go deeper, three times three mathematically is nine. Nine prophetically is full circle. Nine prophetically means full circle. 
So three times, if we're repeating it out of our mouth three times a day and we're fasting for three days, three times three is nine. Nine means for things to come full circle. Are we not praying for things to come full circle? Yes, we are. We are praying for things to come full circle for God's people. So in a place of addiction, each minor, each minor that has been afflicted with addiction, instead of addiction, we are uprooting it from the most primary level, the DNA. And they will instead have DNA that is filled with the nine fruits of the spirit. Catch that. They will instead be filled with the nine fruits of the spirit. So in the place of addiction in the DNA, the minors will now be filled with the DNA that reflects the nine fruits of the spirit, which are love, peace, kindness, gentleness, belief, happiness, loyalty, suffering, and self-moderation. And I just see at the end of this corporate fast, angels in heaven throwing a party at the new DNA that's been created into the generational lineage and also corporately and globally. And justice being handed down at the global level for what's going on. Because Jesus hates the innocent shedding of blood. That's murder. That is, that's murder. In case you didn't know, that's murder. That's the innocent shedding of blood. So again, three days we are fasting, repeating Psalm 103, 12 through 16 out of our mouth three times a day because three times three is nine. Nine prophetically means full circle. How are we coming full circle, full circle, prophet? Well, we are coming full circle because we are uprooting addiction at its most primary level. And in its place, we are replacing our DNA with the nine fruits of the spirit. Also, a little fun fact is Jesus dies at 3 p.m. at the ninth hour. He bore our sins on the cross, then resurrected. So too will these children die. So too will these minors die, but be resurrected with the fruits of the spirits in Christ Jesus. Lord, so to repeat that. Jesus died at 3 p.m. at the ninth hour. He bore our sins on the cross, then resurrected. So too will these children die, but be resurrected with the nine fruits of the spirit. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, the Lord said he wanted me to let you know in case any of you are wondering where the open portal is that you need to pray to uh, for the Lord to highlight to you on strategy on how to close it. He said that some of the portals are music, video games, and movies. Music, video games, and movies. Um, you need to watch what your children are listening to catch that you need to watch what your children are listening to everything is a gateway and i know some people believe like oh well my child wore a school i don't understand what the big deal is or oh my child was watching this i don't understand what the big deal is it's just music it is not just music wake up and smell the cappuccino people look at it this way and this is the analogy that the lord gave to me if a prophet can access the supernatural realm through music and see visions and have dreams and hear the Holy Spirit and can access the supernatural through worship and praise music. And in fact, the Bible says that we are supposed to, and that is actually how you rid of depression. Then why would you not think that the counterfeit would do the same, but in the opposite way? I know Jesus, Jesus is like, that's good. That's good, daughter. Well, it's you, Jesus, it's not me, it's you. All glory and honor goes to you, Jesus. You're welcome. Um, why would you not think that that can be accessed in the opposite way? The devil is the counterfeit. The word says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Sin is pleasurable, says the word before a season. The word says sin is pleasurable for a season. Then the enemy turns on you. Drugs are pleasurable for a season. Then you get addicted. Then the wiring in your brain can't function like it used to. You know, when you use opiates, it rewires your brain, right? When people use opiates, it rewires your brain. Heroin, uh, dilated, fentanyl, they all rewire your brain. Morphine, they're a downer. They work in accordance with the sympathetic, uh, with the parasympathetic nervous system to 
rest, rest and digest. Mm-hmm. So people will fall asleep and they're constantly in a rest and digest state. But um, the neurons that fire in the brain, they actually expand. So when you use opiates, it expands. So you, you need more to get your fix. That's why people end up needing more and more and more and more. It's true. I'm not speaking because I don't know. It's biopsychology. Babies born addicted to heroin, it's a real thing. That's a real thing. They cry all the time. They're inconsolable. Their withdrawals, horrible. I've held and had to cuddle and coddle babies who were addicted to opiate. Niche keep, not good. Bayad. Our babies. God is the deliverer, though. I used to pray over those babies and the little patitas and little head. Pray over them. In Jesus' name, they will be healed and made whole. It's not their fault. Enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy and attack a, a kid in there, a baby in the womb. He don't care. Enemy don't care. He's out to kill. He's out to take lives. He's a murderer. So the Lord says, if we are called to access the supernatural through music, what makes you think that the enemy isn't calling for people to follow him through music as well, or for the demonic to not be accessible through music? If you don't think that's happening with your kids or the enemy is not on a ploy to access your kids, I don't know, Agandra, you've been smoking because that's a lie. He's out there to, uh, to kill you. Um, is out there to also access through music. If I can access the Holy One through praise and worship and through godly music, I mean, yeah, the enemy's doing it on the opposite end with your kids. Don't be naive. Uh, marijuana, the Lord highlighted this to me yesterday too. A lot of people think marijuana isn't a big deal. It's legal now. I think it's legal in most states. I think it's at the low, it's at the state level now. So I think the decisions are being made as to whether it's legal or illegal based on the, not on the municipality, but at the state level. I think federally it's still illegal. I'm pretty sure. But um, there's been, there was debate for years, you know, like it's not a big deal. Here's the thing the Lord said about marijuana. Everybody's body reacts differently. Uh, some people's bodies react and it, it actually acts as a, as a psychoactive drug. So for some people, their DNA structure is it doesn't really, doesn't do anything. It actually calms them. And that's why it's used uh, for chemo patients and also to increase appetite. I know because when my dad was on chemotherapy, they prescribed a uh, marijuana. My dad actually tried a marijuana brownie. My poor dad, we ordered it for him. We we're like, Jesus, if this, please. And we didn't hear anything. We heard crickets. So we were like, okay, we're going to try it. We ordered the brownies for my dad. And my dad took a tiny little bite. Poor baby. Poor little daddy. He was tripping. He was tripping. It was psychoactive. His body did not react well to it. I mean, there's different types of way your body reacts. Everybody's body's different. Some people be like, I'm hungry. I'm eating. I'm good. I'm calm. Not my dad. He flew the roof. He was seeing things. It was like a, it was like a psychoactive with him. Everybody's body reacts differently, says the Lord. I created you. I know what you can handle and not handle. My dad's case, like he, he was like, oh my gosh, he's on his knees repenting to Jesus. Jesus, I'm sorry. I did. We're like, Dad, we're throwing these out. Clearly, this is not working for you. We ask the forgiveness. And we're like, Lord, and Lord was like, it's not your fault. You did what was tried. I didn't answer you. You needed your dad needed to find out for himself. My dad was already older already. So he was like, I'm never gonna do this. And we're like, you know do it in the first place but you were in pain so you live and you learn but the lord is like (laughs) there's been this big debate over marijuana but the lord is like i know who i've created each individual to be and for many it reacts with your body and instead of having a calming effect it's actually it actually has psychoactive induced substances sometimes because they're lazy with things but sometimes because that's just how our body reacts some people can drink a cup of coffee and not get jitters some people get jitters i drink mostly ice blended drinks just because I can't handle deep handle deep amounts of caffeine because it'll make me sick I drink my hot cup of Keurig every morning for caffeine because I need to wake up but I'm sipping that thing over hours hours like I could brew my Keurig at 8 a.m and I only finish like I only drink like half of it 
but it takes me like four hours to sip that half because my body's really sensitive. Most vessels of the Lord are very sensitive. I don't, I can't take, I can't take drugs. I don't take anything besides ibuprofen. I had my wisdom teeth operated on. They prescribed to me corticosteroids and 600 milligrams of ibuprofen. I was like, no, thank you. I ain't taking the 600 ibuprofen. I'll just take 400. I got through. I can't. My body can't react. Just like your my DNA is in tune with the Holy One. I can't even. It will act. As, number one, it'll act as a gateway, and my body just knows it. And number two, the way I am made, I'm pure into the Lord. My body can't handle it. The Lord was like, I'm allowing you to take the corticosteroids, but I only want you <laughs> to take half because I know how I've made you. The corticosteroids help you heal faster. They reduce the inflammation. So I took it and I accidentally goofed one day and I took two. I was tripping. I was like walking up and down my hallways and like my heart was racing fast. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I was like, this is why I don't take drugs. Many of you, you're not like, your body has specifically been made to reject it, especially if you're called and chosen. That's why it's a no, no to you. So that's why the Lord was highlighting to me marijuana. It was like, many people think it's okay, but no. For many children, it's the gateway. It's their gateway drug. It doesn't just stay marijuana. I've interviewed so many people during my course line of occupation. And I asked them, like, how did it become heroin? How did it become meth? Where did it start? Wanting to drown my troubles at 14. How'd you do that? Pot. Did your troubles go away? No. Did the drugs stay? Yeah. Did stay marijuana? No. It's a gateway drug for our youth. And if you don't think the government knows that, they do. I'm just speaking God's word. No shade if you use. I personally have never used can't. I one time I went to Weedy Roast and got a contact hire from the people around me. Woo! That was, that, was, that was horrible. Horrible. I can't stand the smell. I literally get sick on the smell. I can't stand the smell. It's gross. It's I, I can't. Like it makes me gag. I really believe God has made me that way too. Like if it's around me, I'd be like, I need to hightail and run out, out of the way. I can't even get it in my nostril hairs. It makes me sick. It literally makes me sick. So it's not a matter of like, oh, she just doesn't like it. No, like I literally like have an aversion to the smell. I have an aversion to the smell. I have had it happen, had it happen one time around me at the concert. And I, ugh, just, no, I can't. And I can't, I can't even take like prescription stuff. Everything I do is like mostly homeopathic. I pretty much prefer it that way too, though. My body is a temple. I'm a vessel into the Lord. I don't like putting things in there. I'm very holistic. I want to live a healthy, long life. I got to. I got to. Every time Jesus would talk to me, like, I'm not done with you yet, daughter. I need you here. I'm like, yes, Jesus. Yes. I have in reverence. I don't do more than coffee and a whole lot of supplements and vitamins. So that was a word for somebody about marijuana. Um, it is the connect, there is a connection between um, the spirit of psychopharmacia and drug abuse and demonic oppression. Um, if you look in Revelation, um, in the book of Revelation, it talks about sorcery. And then if you look in the New King James International Version, uh, sorcery is actually highlighted and uh, deduced to the word um, pharmakia. Pharmakia has actually ended up becoming the root word for pharmacy and pharmaceuticals, aka drugs and meds. So it is a gateway, people. It is referenced in the Bible. If you look in the concordance and you break down according to the New King James International Version, uh, sorcery will, will be the thing that brings down people. And sorcery, when you look up and you deduce it, is actually referred to as pharmakia. That's where we get our root word in English, people, for pharmaceuticals. I'm not saying don't take things, okay? Sometimes we need that, okay? God will tell you, he'll highlight. This needs to be used for a season. And then if you are using it, Please, please, please be on the floor and asking the Holy One to close up that portal 
if you are on medication, this is a word for somebody, if you are on medication for pain or for something and the Lord has said, it's okay, my daughter, my son, this is what you need in this hour. Ask the Holy Spirit to monitor your use. And then when you are done and you no, no longer need that medication, ask the Holy One, come in submission and say, I command these portals for the whatever was open through the use of medication. I am highlighting that the Lord gave me permission to use this. And now that I am off it, I command these portals, if any, were open to be shut in the name of Jesus. Because if you don't shut them, they're still open. Then the enemy has access to you in the courts of heaven. You don't want that. Nope, nope, nope. So that is the word. We are fasting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, corporately from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It is a liquids only fast. The Lord said for most fasts, it is between um, the person and God how much, or if they want to sow an honor seed, the Lord actually said I, I needed to disseminate his word that it is his desire to sow a seed unto this ministry um, in multiples of nine, whatever that may be. If it's nine dollars or whatever, that's between you and Jesus. And we are at www.affirmfamilyministry.org. I don't ask for many. I don't. That is not my take. We don't. We do everything willingly. I have I have two other secular jobs. I don't. This is not about money, but that is between you and the Lord. The Lord highlighted to sow multiples of nine. So I'm disseminating because I am obedient. And plus, when the Lord asked me to sow two to other things, I got to be obedient too. And we are a ministry. So he asked to tell his remnant to sow multiples of nine if you are if you are participating in this corporate fast. And also, the last word is that if you have a minor in your life, or a family member that needs to be broken free from addiction. You are to write their name down on a piece of paper, anoint that paper and place it in your Bible under Psalm 103. Catch that. Write their name down and place it in the word under Psalm 103. And you will be fasting and praying for their breakthrough for the three days from 9 to 3 a.m. And also decreeing out of your mouth three times per day. So a total of nine days, three times a day orally for the duration of three days. So nine times you will actually be declaring Psalm 1 over 103 over them orally. And remember, we are what we speak out. The tongue has the power of life and death. So we're first speaking life over them that the Lord can remove transgressions as far as the East is from the West. And we are igniting and renewing their DNA at the most primary level. There you go. All right, friends, these directions will be up on our um, social media platform, which is uh, Instagram at Affirm Family Advocacy on Instagram. And I will also post the directions in the corporate, um, sorry, the community sector of YouTube. And the link for this preaching will also be uh, attached to the IG storyline. All right. So this word was profound. I don't like, I don't like chastising words, but this was a hard, heavy word, um, a revelatory word, but also I felt the, like the fury of Jesus really inclining people's spirits to get on board, jump up, jump up on, upon that train, take up your cross and do something for other people, even the minors in your own lives that might be afflicted. All right. That's it. I pray this word blessed you. And I just, that's why I really needed to pray for everybody's spirit man to receive it because it was going to be really heavy. And I felt the Lord's fury, but um, prophets don't just give words of edification. Prophets are also here to mourn. And that is my job. So I, I do it um, humbly, but I also do it in obedience and submission to Christ. So um, if you have any questions, we are at affirm advocacy at gmail.com and the link for our email is in our YouTube page. So, all right, guys, have a blessed week ahead. Um, email if you have any questions, affirmfamilyministry.org. We are on Instagram. Also check out our community sector of YouTube for the directions. Bye-bye.